You have to uh, uh, keep villages alive by actually traveling to them with your party and then uh, defending them, grinding resources around the base and uh, upgrading it. Uh, while the world basically k- kicks you down <laughs> every turn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome to the PBBG podcast, where we talk about all things PBBG, uh, gaming, and anything else. Um, I am going to be your host today, uh, ASDF Delta. You can call me Delta. Um, I am a uh, community person around the uh, PBBG space. I help out with the Discord, uh, code PBBG Lite, and do some of that stuff. So, uh, Foo. Hey, I'm Fuhan Pai. I run pbbg.com. I also run a game called imperialconflict.com. And just here to uh, talk about stuff we love doing. We're here with some guests today, um, Outsider and Voy. Uh, either one of you guys want to take your intro from here? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I'll, I'll start. Uh, I'm Outsider. Uh, not really a hardcore PBBG gamer, but I like coding them. So that's basically how I ended up here. <laughs> All right. Welcome. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I'm Vui. Um, I am kind of very much interested in the whole PBBG genre as such. Um, for me, I think the most important or the most attractive part is this whole browser. Uh, the fact that it can be played anywhere mm-hmm. uh, and you can log in from pretty much everywhere to play it. Uh, it doesn't matter where it is really. And I think that's kind of the intriguing part, um, especially with uh, new technology coming out, making more and more uh, available to do cool things that one could maybe do before. Um, also, I'm like a huge, um, let's say, spreadsheet nerd, so I love text-based <laughs> games. Uh, and I, you, do, you do see a lot of text-based or in the stuff within this genre, and uh, I enjoy that too. Um, again, it's also a bit of a new genre for me. I'm uh, not even two years into it, and also quite new within the community, I would say. Um, so also just looking to learn and interact and and give back what I'm obviously getting. So that's, yeah. Awesome. Cool. Welcome, Welcome guys. So our guests here are um, denoting kind of a different uh, style of podcast here. Um, we're probably not going to be repeating this very often, but these two are our uh, PBBG 2022 Game Jam winners. Uh, they Ooh, created congrats. the winning entry. Yes, congratulations, guys. It is a bit late uh, pulling you guys <laughs> in and <laughs> actually doing this. Uh, but appreciate you guys coming. And uh, so for those of you who don't really know uh, what a game jam is, uh, every year uh, we host uh, the official PBBG game jam, and uh, that's where a group of people get together and they make a whole bunch of games um, within a certain time frame. We put together a little theme around it. Um, this year's theme was uh, ambiguously after the end, um, <laughs> and it had rules and a judging system. And uh, and all that all that great stuff. So the rules are kind of loosely based around the annual uh, PBUG state of excuse me the state of PBUG survey uh, that comes out in January, and then uh, we generally do the jam halfway through the year. So um, now is sorry to date the podcast, but October, mm-hmm. uh, and they they uh, I I think the winners were announced a little over a month ago. So we are getting it's not to too late here. It's yeah, bad. it's not too. It's not too bad, um, but generally, devs get together. They make an entire PBG. Uh, this year was just a month long, so uh, they really got cracking. Uh, I think we've had it different, different varying time lengths. So, um, yeah. All right, let's get into talking about uh, your guys' experience in the game jam, shall we? Sure. Let's do it. Uh, all right. So what? What do you guys? What drew you to? Uh, signing up for the game jam to begin with. You guys both paired up together, right? Right. Yep. Uh, I think for for me, uh, it was just uh, the fact that actually trying out something new. I have not really done game jams before, uh, much less uh, games as such. And again, being new to the whole sphere of PBBG, um, I thought, okay, why not? Um, Worst case scenario, I learned a lot. Uh, best case scenario, I learn even more. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. that was kind of what what 
kind of drove me to 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 this cycle. So, Vui, is this your first game jam that you've ever done? Yeah. Oh, okay. Very cool. Yeah, that's that's my first game jam. Yeah. Um, Outside, I know you've done game jams before. <laughs> uh, yes, I did. I. Uh... Also joined uh, uh, last year's uh, uh, game jam uh, with you guys, and I've done some others over the past decade. Decade, I think, and uh, yeah, they're a lot of fun to do. And I think I finally found a good teammate to do it to do it with. <laughs> awesome! Yeah, I, I definitely uh, enjoyed uh, also the benefits of a fantastic teammate. I must say too. <laughs> Back at you. But <laughs> you guys actually finished, which is pretty good. So <laughs> not a, yes. not a lot of people finished. I think we had uh, finished. <laughs> twenty twenty two. Well, I mean, you submitted it, and I think that counts. Uh, we had like twenty twenty two uh, people sign up, and only three entries. So uh, that's quite an accomplishment. Just finishing the game jam altogether. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. How, how did you guys actually find each other? Like, decide that this was, partnership was something that was going to be viable. Uh, Ooh. I think it was in the Discord channel. We were like throwing it years back and forth or something like that. And then, yeah, some, uh, something like that. Yes, cool. I, I think you were talking about your map idea. And uh, uh, I found it very intriguing. And it uh, fitted with something that I had in mind. And uh, yeah, that's when we started brainstorming. That's true. I do remember that, that brainstorming period uh, over DM. It definitely... Uh, it was intense. We had a good three days. I think we had three days to brainstorm or something, right? That was how it worked. Uh, yeah, yeah. That was, uh, we went through a lot of different phases, I'd say, of uh, let's do this. Uh, what about this? Oh, I would like to have procedure generated stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to have a static it map. starts. <laughs> I, I would like to have a PHP backend. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah, that was the first time. I was like, can we please go with something I understand? <laughs> <laughs> so that's interesting, actually. Um, so, Vui, you wanted to go with a different technology stack than Outsider did? Well, it's half true because uh, the way we split up the, the work was he did the back end, I did the front end. So uh, we had okay. some sort of freedom, obviously, to pick and choose how we were, but we still had to agree on um, how we we're going to go about it. Yeah. Um, Obviously, making a back end um, is you can do that very separately and have a front end uh, with a REST API and get a lot of data and actually have them two separate things. But we obviously work coordinated. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. good division of labor for sure. So I think that's actually a pretty good segue into um, uh, telling us about your game jam entry. Uh, one thing that I w was curious. Uh, how did you ever come up with the name of Project TBD? Uh, this I can actually. This I can actually. Uh, I think I can uh, with uh, some sort of uh, reliable. I can. I can show. Uh, let's see here. I remember this one very well. This is exactly how it came about. The the GitHub uh, board. Yeah. That's that's basically yeah. how it started. If you want to put that on, that up on screen, <laughs> that's how it started. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, you know that amazing it works. So basically, it became Project TBD, and then <clears throat> from there, we kind of went on to okay. So we can always name it later. Uh, we can always change the name. It's okay. Uh, but then as we went through the whole brainstorming and even way into the whole process, uh, into the world building, we then uh, was like, okay, should we call it Project the Burning Dead or Project uh, the Benevolent Death? Or we had these many different ideas uh, of what we should name TBD. Mm -hmm. And in the end, we decided that it was just going to be Project TBD. And like, we'll yeah. let people figure that one out themselves. Yeah. Well, that's that's awesome to me because I feel like, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like you could get hung up on naming something forever. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's not the most important thing, but it sure takes a lot of time when it shouldn't, you know. So kudos to you guys. <laughs> yeah, especially also because at that point, we did not really have the theme fully nailed down. And 
Um, well, while we could have done a little bit more world building around the theme we eventually end up at, uh, it definitely changed, you could say, or evolved a lot. So picking a name out front, up front, sorry, would not have necessarily been the most smart choice anyway. Sure. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, in the spirit of completeness too, like the game is what matters. They, pe that people could play something, not necessarily that they could play something that's named appropriately or, or you know, that makes sense. That, that they're there to play a game, right? It's so, especially for a game jam, that, that's, that's, um, I like what that communicates about the spirit of the game jams. Like you guys nailed it. You, you put your heads down, you, you hustled, you got done. And the name is kind of like, it's not an afterthought, but it's not as important as actual, you know, the experience. Very <laughs> true. Very true. It was also to be fair, that we, yeah. Uh, to be fair, the other games did have some pretty snappy names. So I think that, uh, spending that extra brain power on actually coding it probably gave you a leg up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the other names, uh, games were pretty named well. Uh, Underground Tomorrow, uh, I believe it was. Yeah, and yeah. Um, yeah. Pyroclasm. Station. Uh, oh, Pyroclasm. I don't think Pyroclasm has actually launched yet. They were, it, um, Oh, yeah, of course. They launched later uh, after the game jam. Yeah, nice. right. Yeah, yeah so actually, uh, I, was, I was very inspired by Pyroclasm uh, on a side note. Um, from even before starting the game jam, it was, um, they had a similar concept with the map. Uh, I know that he used Incarnate. Uh, I used Wonder Draft, which I guess we can talk about a little bit later. Um, and he did, went a different approach and uh, whatever. It very much inspired me at least also. Uh, yeah. Also how I chose to, to implement uh, in my own unique way, I'd say, um, a static map into it, which we will get into. Yeah, and we were also kind of scared because they showed really cool pictures, like from day <laughs> one. And we were like, oh, fuck, we're not even that far yet. <laughs> and after a week, they told us that it's basically just front end, no logic from the back end or anything functional. But mm -hmm. <laughs> we were already really scared. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we they, were definitely, definitely sweating a, a pants out on that one. I agree. Uh, I was like, fuck, man, they got that much done already. <laughs> what is inventory system? You got an inventory system? You got pixel art going yeah have... okay <laughs> i'm still struggling trying to get some sort of yeah. some sort of interface going well, it seems like that's part of the fun is you know when you're in it and you see what other people are doing it's kind of a motivator i, I would imagine <laughs> a yeah. motivator incentive um, yeah. scare technique whatever you call it <laughs> fire under your chair you know like, yeah did you so did you find with other game developers releasing ideas kind of as the game jam was going, did you find that that was inspirational for you? Like you could kind of like pick up a couple of things that other people were doing and roll with that. I don't, uh, I don't think we did had took any inspiration from them, just motivation. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I, I think we had a somewhat decent clear concept of kind of what we wanted to do as a, as a, basic core theme and mechanics and what we wanted to achieve, let's say. Um, they were inspiring, maybe, I'd say that. Um, and I think having the constant updates being pushed by the various developers uh, definitely incentivize us to keep going, I think. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Yeah. All right. Um, I guess for everyone who's listening um, or watching, they don't really have a very good idea of what Project TBD is all about. You want to give your your like one minute elevator pitch about what the game is and and kind of what it's about. I think I'll let Outsider uh, answer that one. <laughs> you want to let me do that? I, yeah. you're you're the game design guy. You you can sell it. I can I I will sell it, but uh, the core concept, uh, which we kind of took upon with the limited resource and other things, I think. I'll let you, I'll let you introduce it. And then I'll <laughs> ah, okay. So, so, so the the basic back, back, background was um, the whole problem I had with uh, years of making games where scaling was an issue with multiplayer games. Like people who played for a month had a very le big leg up uh, with people who started like a week ago, and um, that's how I came to a yeah 
concept called a, in, instead of an incremental game, a decremental game. So a where a, a game world was fixed at the start uh, with fixed sets of uh, resources, enemies, and whatever, and uh, uh, it could only get worse. Huh. So people could never win, and they, the only thing they could do is survive longer than the last time. And that's the whole idea behind this game, where you have to uh, uh, keep villages alive by actually traveling to them with your party and then uh, defending them, grinding resources around the base and uh, upgrading it, uh, while the world basically k kicks you down <laughs> every turn. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, that was a pretty good sales pitch. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm. I, I like that. Was well done. It's uh, it flips the 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 concept around and you know demonstrates the uh, maybe the urgency of the of the gameplay or the game loop. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. thanks. Yeah. I, that's that's pretty much what this is. Um, obviously, I could, we can go into details about different aspects of it, but it was really, as I said, I said the the, the limited resources concept. And you just had to survive together, not together. You want to focus on your own city. You want to team up with somebody else. Uh, you want to go far reaching into a distant region to grab resources. Uh, are you going to actually dare doing that? Uh, Herman death, you die, you're gone. Uh, you lose, you turn into a zombie and eventually... Uh, if we had managed to implement that, um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, we had, we had to cut down a few things, sure, sure. Yeah, uh, yeah, or yeah. turn into whatever else you turned into in um, the game, um, and then you restart over. Eventually, the world will end. Um, to see how long you can make a world last. Some sort of leaderboard, high score. Um, this that was kind of the concept. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, okay. So with the with the game jam being only about a month long, and I'm gonna say about pretty heavily there. <clears throat> sorry. Um, the with that kind of deadline, how did you guys approach like managing your time and making sure that you were able to to actually submit the game <laughs> or lack thereof? Uh, <laughs> I like the laughter so far. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a great answer. Yeah. You want to start? <laughs> yeah, I, I'll start. Um, um, kind of using the time we had uh, as efficiently as possible and uh, try to get stuff done uh, that we could say that's done as much as something is ever done in a game jam. Um, and I mean, we had a month, yeah, and I know outside I took off uh, two weeks um, holiday just to like work on this. I was not quite able to do the same. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Just finding that little bit of time every time you have a, a moment to just put in something uh, despite whatever else goes on in your day-to-day -day life, I'd say. <laughs> um, that was kind of key for me, I'd say. <laughs> so a lot of a lot of people who enter the game jam I've seen over the, the three that we've done so far, they'll kind of start with a lot of activity up front and then kind of peter out over time. Um, what, what helped you kind of stay on track and, and to not peter out or kind of get burnt down on it or, or something like that? <laughs> Maybe not like deciding everything at the start. So there are still some new stuff to discover like halfway through. Oh, that's, okay. that's pretty cool. That makes sense. That's yeah. actually a great tactic. Oh. Yeah, yeah. All right. I imagine yeah, it's, 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 it's not a bug. It's a feature, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you're saying poor planning is the key to success. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I, awesome. I imagine there's some truth to that because I, at least I don't know about um, bugs, but I imagine like you're saying, if you don't do everything up front, you leave yourself some room for ideation throughout the process, which keeps you excited. Because I feel like that's yeah. part of the fun is thinking – all these cool things. So if you uh, stay, you know, if yeah. you uh, allow yourself some room for agility, I imagine that keeps things exciting for a little bit. Yeah, true. 
and also like the, you have to find a balance because I'm a a big stigler for perfection, <laughs> and uh, uh, oh. one of the reasons uh, the, that I was able to deliver as much uh, was for me after two weeks saying okay i have to stop refactoring now <laughs> i have to just accept the code that i've written so far <laughs> and not rewrite the whole app again <laughs> boy that's a struggle i feel that every day <laughs> yeah brutal uh cool all right so um going on that with with uh refactoring and, and the code base what kind of tools did you use that you found to be really helpful to kind of help hone down that that workflow process? I think we, we found a bunch of tools. Uh, whether they managed to prove helpful or not was in a different story. <laughs> um, we tried a, various ones. Uh, I think one of them was uh, Jira, Jira, I don't know mm -hmm. how you pronounce it. Yeah. Uh, it was mm -hmm. some sort of um, project management stuff. Um, we tried a little bit, uh, Disc uh, not Discord, uh, GitHub had some sort of stuff. Um, a Trello a bit? Yeah, we tried various things. Um, we we, didn't we really, have like uh, five or six boards and they yeah. were filled with tickets and we did nothing <laughs> with it. <laughs> Com completely nothing with it. That's right. Uh, Discord, I think, was the biggest tool, uh, if that is a tool, I think. Sure, yeah. Definitely. Uh, Absolutely. Being able to just jot things down there whenever. Um, and then, uh, yeah, just making... Let's say um, for like a battle plan, you know, like steps one by one to, let's say, achieve some sort of uh, overall target. Okay, today I want to get the front end layout done. I need to get one, B, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine done. And then, you know, we could come in each other. Okay, now we got this done. Okay, like, okay, what else do you need from me? Okay, I need this and this before I can get that done. Okay, great. And then we kind of ping back. Uh, what is needed and wanted from each other, um, especially towards the end when we are trying to complete things. Uh, we had yeah. like this punch list, I guess that's the English word, punch list mm -hmm. um, of like things to get done. Um, and that was, again, all Discord. So, yeah. Lots of pinned messages. <laughs> yeah, that's that's useful. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh so when when starting out the game, you said your initial scope, your initial idea of what the game was going to be started really small, right? You left a lot of room in there. <clears throat> well, not, not really small, but more <laughs> vague. Yeah. Uh, okay. vague. We had great, like grandiose ideas. It would be basically a, a grand strategy game <laughs> if we could have made what we thought at of the start. But... <laughs> yeah if um yeah we had i mean i can say we had a few ideas um whether or not they all fit in the end but you know we had ideas about multiple worlds self-created worlds uh oh, wow. different type of um uh, biomes uh different uh, modifiers uh different biomes in one map um yeah a noise things. system noise system which we did kind of somewhat have mm, yeah <laughs> more of a whisper yeah. system than yeah. not really noise <laughs> yeah we had uh, a lot of ideas how to make it more like tailing you know also going with okay we're gonna have users not gonna have users uh just characters guest logins um we, we could have expanded a lot more upon it let's say like that um but there just comes a point where we say okay what is the a word we use a lot was, uh, you know, like a minimal viable product mm -hmm. we need to get done. So we say, okay, we actually have something up and running and not everything obviously made it into it. Um, but there was definitely room um, for future expansions and future things to be added to it uh, that could make it a lot more than just what it is right now. That's for sure. Gotcha. So how did you, how did you go about, determining what things that you were going to like leave leave to the wayside what things you want really wanted to focus on of course like guest login was literally part of the criteria so um but you know there's other features that you mentioned like the uh the biomes and stuff like that how did you determine whether or not you wanted a biome or you did you were going to wait for the biome to 
Um, it's it's basically the whole MVP thing. Uh, the biomes were outside of the MVP, so uh, our first plan was to have the MVP ready after two weeks, then have a week of testing, and then have a week for improvements and whatever. And it ended up with us uh, barely finishing the MVP <laughs> after four weeks. <laughs> yeah. uh, so so th th that's a bit how we kept the scope very clear <laughs> in the yeah. end. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds helpful. That's, that's right. Like specifically on that, we had, you know, MVP. Okay, let's get one world up and running. You know, yeah. Let it able to generate a world, spawn and everything needs to spawn into it. Okay, once we that got figured out, great. That's MVP. And then okay, once we finished all the MVP stuff, okay, let's see how we can create multiple worlds or choose between biomes and this kind of stuff. Um, and in that case, for each biome, I would have to physically design a new map. For each single one of them so there's also the time factor involved in that mm -hmm. um do i want to spend or prioritize my time making a bunch of maps up front and not being able to utilize them because we didn't manage <laughs> to finish the other mvp stuff yeah to even get things going you know so that was that interesting yeah okay um so after after you got the mvp out uh and it finally launched in front of actual users um how did you did you what kind of feedback did you guys get from from the players like from the very beginning? I'd say it was rather okay. Um, we had good comments, uh, constructive criticism, uh, being very neutral uh, was good. Um, I did not expect at all uh, that we would win. I must say, because um, I when we were up against the competition and especially with. Uh, before mentioned pyroclasm, we thought was going to be there. We're like, well, we are going to have a tough time. Uh, so <laughs> there was some positive. That was definitely a positive surprise. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then a lot of people were actually really into the game, but it ended up crashing after no. like <laughs> X amount of actions uh, and the uh, the whole game state was saved on the server so if the server crashed <laughs> no. the whole game got reset oh. so that that that, that kind of dampened the mood a bit about it but <laughs> like after two weeks still and even after the game jam people still asked when are you gonna fix the the, the memory bug because it uh, <laughs> i really want to play it that's a great you know sign you know that you, you created something that that struck a chord in a good way apparently yeah and we really yeah. wanted to fix the, the the memory leak bug um but it was not we were not able to obviously finish the post uh we finished the, the submission obviously um because i think also a lot of this game uh it's not a six hour game yeah it's it's persistent uh you want to get to the point where you actually die or the mm -hmm. world goes under right um, and you want to experience that um, that concept, and you want to experience having to start all over again. You want to experience getting to the end, see how long this again. will last. Exactly. Yeah, that sounds great. Just in terms of you know offering something with um, replay value. That's 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 super cool. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So that then, obviously, we would love to fix that uh, kind of major uh, bug uh, post launch. Um, and I think that would obviously have uh, made it a lot more playable. Um, it was definitely playable from a whole game jam perspective. Um, but I think if it's something that would have been, uh, let's say it was able to run for several days at a time without crashing, it could have um, created a little bit more, uh, what do you call this, feedback of what actually would be possible in the game, let's say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, just as a little mention, um, there is like 20, 15, I don't know how many we end up, different types of upgradable survivor types, um, uh, char like characters in the game. Yeah. And you had to choose different upgrade paths and which ones. And there's a lot of interplay about what you choose uh, gives you that bonus and that bonus. And it was maybe a bit hard to achieve. Uh, those type of that type of experience uh, due to that. Yeah. Mm, okay. So, 
if you were going to give advice to any other developers entering a game jam, what would be your like top three suggestions? Oh, I I have a great one for this. Um, that's basically the whole thing that that we encounter with each other. Um, don't assume anything about things your teammates talk about, especially because... with me. <laughs> oh, it, it, we 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 had like uh, uh, we talked about a a combat system, like how uh, how people would fight against the world, and I was very enthusiastically p- talking about a party system with all kinds of upgradable units and whatever, and. I only realized after I think a week or maybe two um, that that we had a totally different interpretation of the whole <laughs> concept. Yeah. So <laughs> I would have been working at the back end with a whole different mindset and uh, a set of ideas for a function that <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> even aware of. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, I can oh, see yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, uh, importance of um, defining the. Um, you know, defining the concept, making sure everyone's on the same page. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And even I think when that... we thought we we had the same mindset, it why <laughs> we most <laughs> of the time we're still not one hundred percent clear to each other. Sure. Yeah, we definitely had our share of uh, interesting interaction on that specific subject, um, and we had to be very disciplined. Let's say that making really sure that the other teammate is really tracking with what we think. They're tracking with, yeah, um, yeah. So, did you find like any of the any of the other, uh, I guess, Trello or any, any of those other things helpful in kind of explaining your ideas, or did you just like hop on a little whiteboard call or something? Ooh, we've tried lots of different things, and they ended up mostly as mood boards, not really as task lists or tools or whatever, and. They are useful to like writing out your ideas, that at least. Mm-hmm. But it's probably even more important to not get too hung up on all the decisions that you've made so far, because uh, I can we we could probably show you the uh, the uh, the yeah the ideas board of on uh, uh, GitHub, and it's filled and filled with ideas like uh, we wanted to want like a setting fantasy ish uh, <laughs> with guns and whatever <laughs> the <laughs> final fantasy who, very nice. who wrote that i mean <laughs> 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 Yeah. And all stuff like that. If, if if we would have been very stubborn and hold on to that, it would have dragged down the game. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Got to be realistic. Makes yeah. sense. All right. Any other uh, lessons for other future? Aspiring? Yeah, I'd say just if you're thinking about making a game or participating in a, in a game jam, just jump into it, and it it really, really does not matter how it turns out. It's more about the experience along the way, and what you you can learn from it. Uh, if you work with somebody, um, you get to learn how to interact better. You get to uh, learn a new framework or a new language or learn whatever or a different way of dealing with things. Um, just anything yeah. you can take out of it and bring with you, I think, is the reward more than anything else. Um, so just jump into it. Jump into it. How motivating. Yeah, <laughs> oh, and there's also a, 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 a very important one, and I'm not gonna. <laughs> yeah, it's totally my own idea thing. You you should you haven't asked me, but ask uh, talk about your issues on the Discord. The PUBG Discord really helped us a lot. Oh, yeah. And uh... <laughs> yeah, I, I remember a lot of that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I've had like hours of talks with other developers, even all other contenders, uh, and and we helped each other a lot, and it, that was almost as fun as just working on the your own game. Yeah, oh, I love hearing that. That's so that's so nice to you know um, see the community aspect of that. Everyone's you know even if, like you're saying they're competing with you, they still want to help you, and we all have like, yeah. a similar positive, supportive um, take on it. It's great. Yeah, because it's. Even though they are a competitor, they are just as much interested to see their own game being submitted than seeing all the submissions there at the same time as yours. 
like submitting a, a game for Game Jam where the only one submitting it is no fun. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can uh, imagine. <laughs> and um, anything you can do to contribute to another uh, contender, uh, making it that step further, having uh, that much more uh, a chance to to compete and and beat you in a few points there and there, it, it's it's nice. Yep. Very cool. All right. So, are we going to see Project TBD in the future, or is it uh, laid to rest? Ooh. I, I would love to continue with it, but it would probably need a complete rewrite with the whole uh, st uh, file storage thing and whatever. It's probably easier to to like continue with it in spirit and uh, start mm. with a yeah new code base for it. Is that going to come yeah. with an actual name or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be Project I mean, TBD too. Project <laughs> TBD is a name, yeah. Let's not be discriminative here. It's oh, a valid right, name. Right. My uh, apologies. The domain, the domain is technically available. We could do it. Project TBD but, again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Project TBD later. Uh, <laughs> I think the game as a as a as a design, uh, not as a code base. Again, also, I think it has potential. Um, I think there's a lot of room for spicing things up here and there and uh, fully fleshing out things if we were to continue developing on it. Um, also, as I said, making starting coding from scratch, but the same spirit, definitely, yes. Very cool. I definitely look forward to seeing that. That'll be great. A spiritual successor. <clears throat> You can also do it for the next game jam. I'm just, you know, throwing that one out there. So. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, I think now that we've spoken so much about this project TBD, um, maybe we should pull it up on screen. Uh, and me and Alex, I can just do a quick walkthrough of um, how it works. So I, at this point, I literally just uh, logged in, created a character uh, or party. Um, called Deadly Bunnies. You see it up top left. Yes. Um, Great you name. see uh, how your money you have in your party, the max party size, uh, how much health they've left, how much energy managed to, to store up, stack up. And um, there's a few information such as the settlement you're currently in, how much health it has, and there's a few other options and, and, and things. Um, on the right, you have kind of the the big elephant in the room. It's this huge map, mm -hmm. uh, which I very much insisted eventually to just keep there. Um, and you basically, you go on expeditions. Uh, you click somewhere. Um, normally, you would go on an expedition closer to your starting location. Um, and you choose one of four different areas. Um, and they have various types of resources that you're going to need for upgrading your settlement uh, or keeping it in repair. Um, and then you basically, you start the expedition. Uh, you start to travel there. After a certain amount of time, you've reached the location. Uh, you start gathering resources. Along the way, you will run into uh, the first type of monster, which is zombies. Uh, and then you start gathering. After you defeated the zombies, you return and um, then you use what you have gathered to upgrade your settlement. That's kind of the core loop. Then you repeat that over and over again, um, as long as you can, obviously. Um, then as you return with resources, um, you have to upgrade the settlement, as I mentioned. Um, and then you have to defend the settlements against zombie uh, raids. For now, it's only zombies. Um, but you're going to defend and keep that settlement alive, and keep it in repair. Um, now I just see we ran into a zombie on the way. You mm. see uh, the top right change, and you see mm. you're fighting a zombie, which has some health uh, and how much health your party has. Um, Uh-oh. Yeah. Your party is not looking good. My party is not looking <laughs> good. I, uh, I think it might have something to do with the fact that I kept this um, running in a tab to uh -oh. the point where the zombies got progressively stronger without <laughs> me doing jack shit about it. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, this is not looking fantastically good. I am going to click that retreat button, which I cannot click because I am in combat. Um, <laughs> that is the end of me. Hey, that's part of the yeah. game. <laughs> yeah. Big red. Sweet. Right. 
Okay, so I actually managed to die. Um, that's awesome, though. That's that's really cool seeing it seeing it in action. Yeah, that is pretty much what it is. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna click restart game because I restarted, uh, and I'm gonna create a new party and I'm gonna <laughs> come back into it. And uh, this one is gonna be called uh, the Deadly Rabbits. <laughs> Spelled that correctly. I'm sensing okay. a theme here, Bowie. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I am definitely dying, so that makes sense. Um, <laughs> okay, so um, that's that for now. Um, in the you can, cl you can have... click on the project uh, name, right, for uh, cheat. Uh, oh, did you, did you remove it? Whoa. Well, it was protected against backend. Uh, you you had it limited. Uh, I, I it doesn't work in production. Uh, I oh, of course. I, Some I Easter eggs going on. I was hoping it kind of would <laughs> secretly <laughs> <laughs> because I was wondering if anybody was going to figure that one out. Uh, I had like hard coded into the, the, the title. You could click on it and get max energy and tons of resources. <laughs> uh, nice. Because we wanted to test upgrading and mm -hmm. and uh, upgrading your, uh, your, your peasants into survivors and other things. <clears throat> um, so when you start, do you um do you land anywhere in particular? Is it randomized, or does everybody land at the same starting spot? How does that work? Okay, so there's uh, five settlements. Um, the first one is called uh, Feyuntusa. Second is called Bovasis. Then we have Wen, Maibora, and Kalm. And these are the five settlements. Um, when you spawn, it will automatically uh, pick the settlement with the least amount of survivors or set, uh, oh, okay. survivor parties in. Uh, to try to evenly distribute uh, the player base. Mm -hmm. uh, you are free to travel between uh, the different settlements. You can travel to another one. Um, you see it creates a little uh, movement path. You walk that way or huh. uh, you walk That's that cool. way or you go up here across um, the ice, whatever. Um, yeah. And you can then change settlement and work together in, in settlements. Um, the idea behind that was that as it gets later into the game, uh, you would have more and more zombie raids going on, and you would have to sometimes help out other settlements to survive. Yeah, uh, that so makes that sense. Was, that was the idea behind that. Awesome. So is that part of the, the decrement, decrement uh, type of mechanic? Is it just zombies get stronger, or is there something else at play there? Um, if, at the moment, they just get stronger. But uh, if the, our whole idea would have been implemented, it would also um, the zombies would also get stronger or more um, interested in you. The more noise or activity is done in an area. Hmm. Okay. So let's say you have uh, five people uh, doing expeditions in the same location. It would generate a lot of uh, noise, and it would then uh, increase the chances that you would get attacked. Um, if you would die eventually, uh, that would also, uh, the deal was it was going to trigger um, a sort of event quest. Um, and people would have to go and, and slay you before you um, start turning into a, a badass zombie and creates <laughs> a whole lot of noise around your settlements, uh, triggering even more bigger zombie raids. There was always being kept on your toes uh, type of concept. That was also part of the, the grand scheme. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So new players would come in. They would automatically start to help because they'd be part of the settlement, right? But right. if a newer player dies, then older players, or if an older player dies, the newer players, or vice versa, would have to go out and try to take care of that as soon as possible. So you'd have to like have a pretty good understanding of what, what all is happening in the game. That's right. It uh, requires a lot of interaction between players. Um Ideally, this one would have a chat system linked to it uh, or Discord channel where people could coordinate and, and get help from each other. Um, also, now we're speaking about this whole concept of new players joining in. Um, the way these settlements are designed is that you can actually leave your party members in the settlements uh, freely. And when you put them in a settlement, anybody else can pick it up from that settlement and put it into their own party. Hmm. Um, so you might end up with a person um, getting toward the end stages and they find a new um, new uh, 
party member, a new survivor out in the wilderness, and they say, okay, I prefer keeping him in my party. I'm going to leave one of my older party members in the settlement to either defend it or have newer players pick it up and get, let's say, fast-tracked or a little bit speed up into the whole um, action, you could say, mm -hmm. because they instantly get ac access to a stronger member that they themselves don't have to train up and build up um, because all the players leave them behind. Huh. I could see some uh, the opportunity for some depth there in the experience. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it was yep. like a catch-up mechanic, I think. That's what you call it. Um, in a way that, because the world gets progressively harder and harder, so we had to figure out a way how to, how can a new person join in five days, seven days, two weeks after it started and still have a fighting chance. And that little thing gave it an extra oomph that they, they might uh, be able to, you know, get help from from more experienced players who's been there for a longer period of time. Nice. That makes sense. Interesting. And it's an inherent, in, uh, it's inherently cooperative, right? So <laughs> even if newer players get in there and they want to like, you know, you're, it's not like a PVP type of thing. You can still go out and contribute by gathering, assuming that you can handle the zombies at whatever stage they're at. But very cool. it, it is, it is right now. But I, I, that was one of the big, uh, um, yeah, point, points of difference, of views of difference b between us. I really wanted to give players the option to, to basically steal resources from other <laughs> villages to 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 uh, keep their own village alive, or to steal those uh, 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 party members to to keep the, to protect their own a hmm. bit more. Uh, but uh, it was harder to to implement, and it was also a bit too hardcore in the eyes of uh, uh, my fellow teammates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of want to keep it in the co-op spirit of things. Uh, <laughs> Especially because, I mean, for me, in a game jam, you maybe experience five, ten people max sure. having a, a swing at your game. And uh, I felt going full-blown PvP against each other or <laughs> stealing resources from each other. Um, not that we went full-blown PvP, but I felt it would be more appropriate for this scale that we were playing for. That makes sense. So... If it wasn't if it wasn't part of the the game jam, then would you have decided to do that differently? I I would probably have uh, a budget at that point. I would probably have said, yeah, okay, let's see mm -hmm. how we can import some uh, some no non co op some um, spice interaction. Yeah. How yeah. best can you make <laughs> the players angry at each other? <laughs> yeah, and we would have also implemented the uh, like the custom world uh, system where people can create their own world on the server and uh, invite, make it public or invite friends, and then it's it's a lot easier to to give people the choice for PvP like activities. Sure. Yeah, because we we could envision a group of friends saying five, ten people saying, okay, we want to try to get together. We're going to see how far we can get with five people, right? And let's play fair and square. Or you can go in a public world where it's just chaotic and people are fighting for their own village or not. Uh, or they're literally just going around and just seeing how many zombies they can smash down. Uh, whatever they find fun themselves in the different features within the game. Yeah. Uh, even people, we even had the idea that um, we would allow like private solo type of ap approach where you're like, okay, I'm one person. Let's see if I can manage to keep all five villages alive by myself, hmm. moving around, you know, building up survivors, placing them in the settlements, letting them, you know, defend and, and keeping oh. them all in repair. Uh, we had different ideas that we wanted to obviously would love to put in to it. Yeah. Is there an opportunity to put in like AI players that would kind of go around AI parties? <laughs> we talked about it quite a lot, and also like like traders who went between villages to do stuff, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and we actually decided on making it fully player driven uh, for the game jam with an option later to 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 expand spend on it. Yeah, that's awesome. One of the things I really like about the game jam is that it really does a good job of like distilling down a good idea, right? And I feel like a lot of 
the games that are released out um, in the past couple of years, and, I, and some of them have a whole lot of like extra stuff that you can tell was was kind of uh, there from either the very beginning of development or kind of like kind of bolted onto the side, not really like nice and cohesive. But all the entries that we've had to the game jam so far have been really like down to a core feeling idea and not a whole lot of like fluff, you know. Yeah. So that's very cool. I mean, that's what matters is the, you know, you could have all the extra features in the world, but if the core loop is not fun, then it doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's nice to see, like you're saying, the distillation where you, you get to really feel the, the, you know, the, what's fun mechanically. That's, that stands well on its own. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, okay. Um, do you guys have anything else you want to go over about Project TBD? Um, I think I showed off the game uh, quite a lot. Um, we did the usual stuff. We added wikis, um, a good overview of all the different uh, type of survivors, the features and stuff. Uh, try to make it as as um, user friendly as possible. Obviously, um, yeah. I think that's I think that's pretty much it. Awesome. Did you did you find people actually using the wiki and? as as super helpful or i had a few people comment to me uh on the discord or in uh in dm uh when we were doing a beta testing uh whatever you call it like testing before we released it um Mm -hmm. and uh yeah they definitely went through it and they went to see where do i want to go which path do i want to take oh Mm -hmm. i can upgrade this guy from this to that uh this guy i have to have this guy okay great okay i'm gonna go for the svihanda Uh, this kind of stuff, yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Very nice. Seen a lot of different kind of information or wiki systems inside of games to varying degrees of success. So that seems pretty cut cut and dry, though. So <laughs> I'm sure that helps. Yeah, I think it's just one of those things that is uh, considerate. Um, yeah, I mean, anything you could do to make the player's life easier, you know, it, uh, you know, it makes the game more fun when you don't have to work to play the game it's you know information's there for you yep. that's right yeah i'm guilty of that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me, me too <laughs> yeah that's just so yeah. much extra work man yeah oh, we, we uh, can act like uh, we planned it all along but i think we only added it like two days before the release <laughs> oh yeah it was um one of the last things i must say we managed to get done we're like okay what else we do what, okay oh wiki in the in the dialogue somewhere, we need to show that somewhere. There you yep. go. Yep. Hey, one yeah, one minute before point. release, you know, two weeks before release, it got there before release. That's what matters. Exactly. Yep. Nobody yeah. has to know when. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Except anyone listening to this now. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, um, all right. There is maybe one last thing I personally would like to talk about. Uh, obviously, being the front end, I would love to take the opportunity to just give a quick overview of how this map was made because I put quite a lot of time into making it. Uh, and I think other people could maybe get inspired from what I have to say on it. Well, it looks great. That's, yeah, that's Absolutely, cool. yeah. OK, cool. Um, so basically, I used the software called uh, WonderDraft. And WonderDraft is a software made, made for making uh, dungeon dragon maps. And uh, it allows you to generate random uh, landscapes um, and water levels. And you have tons of different brushes. And you can basically um, spawn these type of houses or trees or mountains with brushes. Um, they're technically called symbols in the, in the software. And you can import your own. And people are making these uh, external assets of symbols. And there's a whole wide array of things you can add to it. I went with just basic stuff. Um, and the whole idea was to how do I take this static map and how do I make it um, interactive and something that you can basically have an experience, not just looking at visually because it looks beautiful, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> but actually do something with, right? Um, uh, and the way that was done is that basically the map in OneDraft allows you to export each single layer as a separate uh, PNG file. Hmm. Uh, so you export the background, the water, which is then detailed as kind of bluish uh, talk free type of um, water uh, and then you can export all the the ground the earth uh, all the stuff separately 
and then you can export all the, the symbols, the mountains, uh, everything on top as separate layers, right? So mm -hmm. what I did was is I I took and took the, the static image off the ground um, and I imported it into uh, some sort of image editing software. Um, I just downloaded something called uh, Inkscape. And basically it allows me to turn um, into an SVG and I meticulously sat and I hand drew uh, around each little uh, border here, tiny, 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 tiny path elements, like all the way around. Mm -hmm. I probably spent hours hand drawing this out one by one, going all the way around it. Wow. Every single little, little, uh, little uh, app and whatever. And then I made these 21 different regions and then I exported everything out uh, as uh, SVG elements with paths that has these exact uh, proportions. And then I superimposed it on top of uh, the layer, which was uh, only the, the terrain. And afterwards, I superimposed all the, the mountains and the symbols and everything on top. And there was an exact reason for this is because I wanted to do fancy highlighting. I wanted to be able to click on it and show paths and everything. And I didn't want to highlight uh, and change the, the color of uh, the, the, the trees and the mountains and so forth. I only wanted to change, change oh. the terrain. And that was kind of a big thing for me, at least when I was making it, to try to make it look like this is actually not just a static image and uh, a bunch of overlays or something like that. Mm. Um, so I it, it basically renders... Uh, all the different PNG layers, SVG, and then the PNG layer uh, again with the symbols on top, um, and that's how I managed to to create this type of uh, kind of fake uh, interaction on this basically static image. And wow, it looks real enough to me. It's pretty pretty uh, well done. The, the the end result is pretty um pretty smooth. Yeah. <clears throat> so how uh, did you how did you actually position them like next to each other? Um, you mean the, the the actual regions for the highlighting or the SVG? What, mm -hmm. do, what do you mean? Well, yeah, for the uh, yeah for the highlighting. So when I exported um, from Inkscape all the different uh, SVG uh, elements, it basically saved uh, the ratio you could say in relationship to the original picture. Um, it's basically I imported PNG and I exported it as SVG. I got everything out there uh, exactly as I, I put it in there, including it converted uh, the actual terrain into to kind of a, a bitmap into the SVG, which I obviously just deleted and rendered as, with the original PNG. Um, but it that retained the same ratio uh, perfectly, just out of the box. I was lucky. Wow, yeah. that is that is awesome. Also, I happen to notice that like there's a pathfinding algorithm in there. Yep, that's all outsider. He's uh, yeah. He was. Uh, you want to talk about that? Um. Yeah. Sure. If we have the time, I. Uh, uh, we use the. I think it's the A star uh, uh, algorithm on the back on the on the back end. Uh, uh, like all the uh, all the. Possible paths I uh, get ca cached at the uh, world generation. Ooh, oh, widescreen. There we go. Oh, that's just like the, the, the crashing of the game. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just crashed. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. A whole new world. <laughs> Zero crash. Don't worry about it. Sweet. Now we got the real experience. Yep. There we go. We got fresh zombies. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Fresh zombies. Uh, but yeah, okay, it's. So you it's, cached... it's it's basically a uh, fully cached A star, uh, uh, yeah, hash map or how, how do you call it? With uh, all the areas have a, a specific weight, all the borders between areas have a weight, and uh, the algorithm just calculates the the quickest route. And that was also a for a future uh, a feature where like uh, uh, roads between regions could be upgraded, so the traveling becomes easier, and uh, all mm. all kinds of stuff like that, cool. and maybe biomes with like snow that that, that is harder to traverse. That's awesome. Like, That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, like over mountain of... ranges or something, right? Yep. Yep. 
Oh, what, what a great example of um, complementary skills between you two. You know, the, the you know, obviously we're seeing visually the, how the front end is, you know, uh, represented, but on the back end, seeing how that actually, uh, you know, how that actually manifests in the game experience. It's, it's really, really a, a great example of two people working together and each offering their own benefit to the to the development experience. That's super cool. Yep, yep. That's why, uh, yeah, we make a good team. Yeah, seems like it. Yeah, yeah. Um, well done, guys. We, we did quite well. I think we managed to balance uh, what we are good at uh, quite well for this game jam. Um, I got to do some front end work, and uh, also I got to shine in his uh, amazing back end uh, skills. And I thought that that was uh, it was good team play within that for sure. Very nice. Um, yeah, so we are we are uh, approaching our one-hour mark here. I wanted to slip in at the end here uh, a potential new, uh, we'll call it segment, I guess, uh, a pick of the month where each of us uh, comes up with something. Uh, it could be uh, something online, something in real life, uh, a pick of the month. And um, so each podcast will kind of go around. Um, I can start with my pick of the month. It is a Google Chrome uh, extension made by someone that I met on Twitter, who's very, very good at what they do. It's called Retheme, R-E theme. And what it does is on um, like news sites that have a whole lot of ads on it, it will update the theme of that page to not include any of the markup for those ads. And so it like purges a whole lot of sites for you. It makes stuff uh, actually usable instead of like just oh, wow. a barrage of ads. Yeah, it's fantastic. That's awesome. Wait, it's, so it's like a, a new form of ad blocker? Um, you know, it, it could be said to be that, yes. Uh, and it does a pretty darn good job of it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's pretty nice. So I invite you guys cool. to check it out. Yeah. Uh, Fuhan, what do you have? Um, <clears throat> well, we were talking a little before we started recording here that I, I went to TwitchCon um, last weekend. So I will say not specific to streaming, but in the spirit of what we're doing right now, just um, having an opportunity to meet people in person and have conversations um, uh, in some more depth was uh, kind of my pick of the month, something that I like doing. Because I, I love talking to people. I love talking to you guys. I love talking to other developers, streamers, gamers, whatever. So anything that gives me an opportunity to do that um, with more people, is um, I always love that. So that, that was it for me, I guess. Very cool. So... Community is your pick of the month. I guess so. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> I love it. It's great. Uh, Outsider, what do you got? Ooh, yeah. I, I don't really have a, anything fancy or something. Uh, uh, I, I can only think of uh, a game that I've played a lot this month. It got released. It's called uh, Terra Invicta. It's not a PBBG, so <laughs> it's not really on theme. Oh, that's but, all good. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's <laughs> one of my favorite 4X games so far that I've played. It's basically uh, if uh, uh, Crusader Kings and XCOM had a, uh, a child together. Cool. Wow. I'm going to check that. Is that on Steam? Yep. It's an early access, uh, so it's kind of rough at the edges, but it's already showing a lot of promise. Very cool. All right, Bowie, your last one. Okay, uh, I have to probably say that my pick of the month, or if it counts as a pick of the month, um, is um, AI art. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I think, <laughs> I think if course. those who have been following the Discord uh, I must say uh, have maybe noticed that uh, I have gotten quite in-depth into this uh, very big rabbit hole of AI art um, across different types of... Um, AIs, uh, generators, and uh, different type of styles. And I have uh, definitely explored uh, numerous types of ways to produce AR art in um, hobby capacity, professional capacity. Um, how how could that just be part of the whole, let's say, game development experience? Uh, can we use AI art? Uh, how can we use AR art? Um, uh, for example, we looked a bit at, at logos. Uh, sorry, logos. Um, uh, they're making uh, icons for games. Can we make icons for games using uh, AI um, to generate icons? Um, or is that not feasible? Um, do we need to do too much editing afterwards, etc.? cetera? Um, and um, yeah, I think I could, I could speak in length about AI art. 
But the, so the uh, stuff that you're doing is, is, is really great results. It's a, uh, it's shows the potential very well. Yeah. I, I, I'm also, uh, quite, uh, if I must say, without uh, sounding too uh, full of myself, kind of <laughs> impressed uh, with the fact that I managed to actually make something stunningly beautiful uh, using AI to that extent, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, I'm That's just cool. sitting scrolling through some of the stuff, and my gosh, there is some amazing uh, possibilities, I think, within it. So what's funny about that is as soon as I found AI art, um, I think it was Dolly Mini, um, I, I tried doing the exact same thing, creating uh, icons, right? So, uh, what's the consensus on that? Can we can we use it to create icons, or or is it not there yet? Um, I think with a bit of extra practice, um, you could potentially get to a point where you could use the raw AI generated uh, for icons. But I think where it really shines um, is more as concept art uh, to get bright ideas of um, of how to to actually do icons that are unique or to get some great ideas of, of what to do. Um, I'm just going to pull up one uh, quick tab here, uh, just of some, some randomly generated uh, icons, if you could pull that up. Um, so yeah, you see this is AI generated, yeah? Uh, yeah. And they That's look kind of really fancy, cool. yeah? Yeah. But again, yeah. would you want to take those ones straight ahead and put them into your game? Uh, mm. Or would you want to have them a little bit retouched? Or you want yeah. to have them maybe redrawn in a specific style to keep it coherent throughout the entirety of your game? Probably, yes. Yeah, yeah. A little cleanup. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for our listeners who aren't going to be on YouTube, oh, yeah. uh, there is an array of icons that look pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll put a link to this in the in the show notes too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's you know, a, thinking about that, icons, yeah. it, it actually looks pretty inspirational. And maybe that could be an interesting idea for a future game jam where you have to take like the concept of an AI generated say landscape or something and make a game around that, or That's here's cool, a yeah. whole bunch of icons and like go nuts, you know, hmm. um, that could be a really interesting, uh, kind of, kind of theme. I think so. Hmm. I, I think yeah. definitely, uh, I think AI is, uh, in terms of arc, it's, it's not something everybody's interested in. Um, I, I see who is following the, the channel AI art on the discord. Um, and it's there's a select few people that that find it really interesting and and generally uh, are more are into this kind of stuff. So I think it might gain a certain type of interest within developers. But I think uh, we're not quite there yet, where we can maybe make it uh, the main center of attraction or attention around a jam as such. Personally, well, we'll, we'll see uh, what happens within a year. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, uh, we, what people are doing with AI ones. Yeah. is yeah. getting fancy, yeah. So yeah, like who knows? Um, I know there was some 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 more detailed type of AI models that uh, were able to do some pretty consistent mm. uh, stuff, and I think once that becomes more and more broad, um, possibly that could be a great. Uh, concept or subject to evolve a jam around yeah sure awesome <laughs> all right i think uh, that about wraps it up uh outsider vui thank you so much for joining us on this uh episode of the pbbg podcast and thank you everyone else for joining us and we'll see you next time real quick okay. uh, before you do cut it just want to invite everyone here if you uh, haven't joined the patreon yet uh we still do have that uh you know open for anyone who wants to join get access to our uh, members only discord uh, but yeah, I just want to do a quick plug for that. It helps us uh, cover the cost of producing this podcast and um, other things as well. So, but yeah, like, like uh, Delta said, thank you guys for being here. And um, yeah, this was awesome. Thank you, Delta, for hosting. See you next time. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for that. Bye bye.